on the y value, okay? So this very first one that we're going to look at is we're going to graph the polar equation r is equal to 4 cosine of theta. So who has 0 degrees? All right, what is that value? It would be 4, okay? So when we're graphing this, 0 is the theta, okay? 0 degrees is right here, so then the r is 4, so we go out to... Uh, the radius of 4 right there. Okay, who has 30 degrees? I. Okie dokie. What would that value be? Uh, 3.46. 3.46. Okay, so we go on the uh, 30 degree line right there, and we go out 3 and almost about halfway between the 3 and the 4. Now, um, we need to connect these as we're going. Now, we could put more detail in here. Don't connect that with a straight line. Okay, it's going to be curved, so try and put some curvature to it, um, but we're going to connect them as we go. Okay, 45 degrees, what is that value? Okay, you know what, let me, 2.83, okay. <clears throat> you know what, let's fill in the table, then we'll fill in the gap. Okay, 60 degrees. Two. Two. 90 degrees. Zero. Zero. 120 degrees. Mm -hmm. Negative 2, 135. Negative 2.83, 150. Negative 3.46, how about 180? Negative 4, how about 210? Negative 3.46, thank you very much. Okay, so let's see here. We left off graphing at 45, so 45 was 2.8. Okay, so almost out to the radius of 3. Again, connect those with a curve. 60 degrees was 2. Okay, and 90 degrees gave us 0. So that's a point at the pole. 120 degrees is right here. It had a negative radius. So what does that force us to do? We go through, right, negative radius, we go through the pole to the other side, and that's where we put the negative two, or that's where we put the radius of two. 135, the same thing, we have a negative radius, so we go through the pole, and we're almost at a radius of three. Uh, 150, we go through the pole, and we're between 3 and 4, and 180, we go through the pole because it's negative 4, so we end up on that very first point that we graph. And then, let's see here, we got one more, 210, it's negative 3.46, so we end up out there on 30 on the exact same point as 30. So that's why the table stopped at 210, because then the values just keep repeating themselves, okay? Um, so a lot of these polar equations, because they're related to trig equations, remember trig equations repeat themselves frequently. Um, so that is the graph of this function. Now we could have done more angles. We could have done 15 degrees. We could have done 75 degrees. We could have done, 105. We could have picked a bunch of different random ones. I just picked some uh, nice pretty ones that we're familiar with. Um, now my picture is not necessarily the greatest, but what kind of shape is this going to look like? A circle. A circle. Okay, it is a circle. And if you also remember when we were converting equations from rectangular to circular uh, to polar form, okay, uh, whenever we ended up with something like this for cosine of theta, or sometimes it was a cosine and a sine, that was a circle. That was the equation of a circle that started out with an x squared and a y squared. Okay? So, um, here is the summary of that. If you flip your paper over, graphs that look like r time, or r is equal to a cosine of theta, and r is equal to a sine of theta, are circles with a diameter of length a. So the one that we just did was 4 cosine of theta, so it had a diameter of 4. It went from the pole to a radius of, or yeah, to out to the radius of 4, um, so that whole diameter was, was 4. 
Now notice, if it's cosine, it's going to be on the x-axis, okay, and that makes sense because cosine corresponds with x. If it's sine, then it's going to be on the y-axis because sine corresponds to the y values. Um, we can have cosine and sine together, and those circles aren't going to be centered on the x or the y. They're going to be centered somewhere else in one of the other quadrants, depending on the equation. If, as long as it's just a cosine of theta and a sine of theta, yes, it will always touch the pole. It will always touch the pole or the origin, however you want to look at it. Now, let's compare to our calculators really quickly. Okay, I told you that your calculator does have a polar mode. So when you press mode beside your second button, if you look down at the fourth row, we never messed with this before. Okay, right now it's in function mode. Function being y equals. If you look at the third option, it says P-O-L, that stands for polar. So when you press enter, and then you go to your y equals, it no longer has y1, y2, y3, so forth and so on. It now has r. So you can type in, uh, our equation was just for cosine of theta. Now the theta is where your x is. Has anybody ever wondered why it says x, t, theta, and n? And that has to do with the modes, okay? We're in the third mode, so we'll be using the third variable, the theta. All right, and press enter, and you can graph it. So the reason why my circle doesn't look too circular is because my window is not square, okay? My window, um, if you look at it, it's wider than it is tall. So the fact that we're going from negative 10 to 10 in both the y's and the x's, is what's throwing it off. So you can press zoom, and if you've ever looked, number five is a square feature. So what it does is it makes your x values a little bit wider so that it squares up the window, that the proportions are correct. Now it looks a little bit more like a circle, right? You can zoom in if you wanted to see in a little bit more greater detail, uh, but you can tell that it's a circle, okay? So, the reality is, on the final exam, if they were to ask you, you know, which one is this graph or whatever, technically you can just plug it into the calculator, but you can save yourself a little bit of time if you do kind of remember these uh, function rules, okay? Let's look at a couple of different examples, because circles, kind of boring, okay? Um, we've graphed circles before, regardless of what's uh, let's look at the equation 1 minus the cosine of theta. And let's see what we get there. So if you have a chip, all right, what do we get to 0? 0. What about 30? 0. 0.13. 0. 0.13, 45? 0. 0.29, 60? Really? <laughs> 90. <laughs> going on the table. Yeah, 90. Okay, 120 degrees. 1.5. 1.5. 135. 1.71. 150. 1.6. What did you say, uh, Giovanni? 1.86. 1.86, I'm sorry. Oh, too many numbers. 1.86, Giovanni again? 0.5. Okay. Uh, 180. Two and two tenths. 1.87. Okay, so let's graph this, see what we get. Zero, zero, okay, that's a point at the pole. 30 degrees, point one three. Uh, that doesn't go too far out from the pole there. Okay, uh, 45 degrees, point two nine, a little bit further out. Okay, 60 degrees, point five. So we're kind of starting to curl around here. 90 degrees is 1. I'm finally going to kind of start to connect these this time. Okay, 120 degrees is 1.5. A little bit wider. 135 is 1.7. Uh, 150 is 1. almost 9. 180 is 2. 210 is 1.87. Does anybody know what's going to start happening after this point? 
It's gonna, well, it's not quite a circle, but it is going to start re repeating. It's kind of a spiral here, okay? Uh, we've got a bit of a spiral. All these values are going to keep repeating, uh, so we can kind of fill in the rest of our little thing here. There's some lovely symmetries. Remember that was what I mentioned the first day. Yeah, it's kind of a little heart. Okay. Um, remember on the first day when I introduced polar, uh, I pointed out most of all those graphs were symmetric. Okay, almost all of these graphs are going to be symmetric. Again, because they are built from trig functions, and trig functions are periodic, they're oscillating, they repeat those values over and over again. Okay, so we could have made this table longer. We could have gone to more than 210 degrees, obviously, but... I think you've kind of started to see the pattern there, okay? So, another type of graph, or actually, let's do one with sum. Yes, sir. Yes, this line of symmetry would be the x-axis. If we folded the top down on the bottom, it would be symmetric about the x-axis. Cosine, yes, cosine is usually always going to be associated with the x-axis, yes. So it kind of makes sense if we talk, let's look at 1 plus 2 sine of theta, okay, probably we're going to be centered or related to the y-axis. Now, it's not fair that everybody, oh, 1, 30 degrees, 2, 2, 2, okay, 45 degrees, seriously, are we missing 45 degrees? Does anybody have 45 degrees? I got it. I got it. Huh? Oh, good grief. It's 2.4. One. Four. Okay. 60 degrees. 2.732. 90. 3. Okay. 120. 2.732. Ooh, there's some symmetry. 135. Up. That's a pretty good guess. 150? 2. 180? 0. 210? Thank you. Oh, come on. Don't be just shooting in the dark. Huh? 0.5? Wait, 0.5? What was 30? 210. Zero. Zero. I said zero. Okay. All right. So zero, one, thirty-two, forty-five, two point four, sixty, two point seven, ninety is three, one twenty is two point seven, two point four, two. One, two, ten is zero. Uh, let me see here. Uh, somebody give me two twenty-five. Okay, so two twenty-five is negative. What four one four? Point four one four. It's an inward spiral forever. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. I should have. Okay. Yep. I remember now. Okay. Uh, negative one. I forgot what it said. Four. Okay. So, two. This is 225 out here. And it had a negative radius, so we got to go through to the other side. Nope, just 0.4, not 1.4. Not bad. 0.4. Okay. Um, what do we get at, who's got uh, 240? Negative 0.73. What about 270? We've got 270. Negative 1, 
Okay, who's got uh, three?